Welcome to rebuilding a model steam plant part 43. Completing the steam piping then a test run on compressed air. Followed by making the condensate drain tap assembly. I show one way to make a leather drive belt for the dynamo and test it to make sure that it stays in place. In this clip I'm bending a steam pipe to connect the turret to the inlet of the S50. It took a few attempts to get this right but eventually the piece of pipe was a perfect fit between the steam tap on the turret and the steam inlet on the engine. Some viewers may be wondering why I haven't painted the condenser and here is the answer. I'll do that once I've completed all the piping. With the amount of trying and bending and retrying and fitting I was bound to scratch the condenser so I didn't paint it. But I will be doing it in the next episode. Here I'm showing fitting the pipe once I'd silver soldered the unions on the end. Pipe work needs to be as neat as possible and I think this is okay. I'm not going to lag the pipes in string because A I hate doing that and B it will give the new owner of the plant something to do on the cold winter nights. This of course is optional. I think it's time to test the integrity of the steam piping by giving the engines a quick test run. I don't need to speak over this part. At the moment the boiler is isolated by shutting the valve on the boiler, that way I can inject oil into the system and it won't go into the boiler. In this clip I'm closing the valve on the end which shuts off the compressed air. The pressure gauge verifies that there isn't any compressed air in the boiler itself. The steam valve on the turret that is currently connected to the air supply has a dual purpose. When the engine is in steam this valve can also be used as a steam valve to allow the running of a third engine. It's also going to be useful to connect compressed air after a run to blow away all the water in the engines and allow the admission of some WD-40 and some lubricating oil to prevent any rusting in the number 10 cylinder. It's not a problem with the S50, that cylinder is made from gunmetal. This clip was recorded before I started the piping and the plant looks quite different now. I need to make the condensate drain. It's not sufficient to just stick a tap on top of the tank that would not drain it. I need to solder a piece of copper pipe that goes right to the bottom or almost to the bottom of the tank. Here I'm drilling out the base of the valve to 3 sixteenths of an inch. I drilled the 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter hole as deep as I dare. The pipe needs to be a good fit in this hole and it also needs soft soldering. I've lightly clamped a valve in a very small vise that I have, it's quite a useful tool is this. And I'm using this excellent small Proxon blowtorch to heat the area where I need to solder it. With a job like this it's important to get the heat just right. If I heat it up too much then the paint's going to bubble and if I don't heat it enough then the solder joint will be poor. I'm using electrical multicore solder for this, I find it very convenient. I left the heat on for a while to make sure that all the solder flowed into the joint and then I cleaned up the joint using some Scotch-Brite and here is the result, a very neat soldered joint. I needed the tap to point towards the boiler so I found a copper washer of just the right thickness and after bending a piece of 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe it now looks like this. Easy to connect a silicone rubber pipe for draining the condenser. Over now to the gas side of things. This is how I've decided to finalise the gas system. Originally I put a small gas tank inside the plastic assembly that sits on this fancy shaped piece of wood. I wasn't happy with that arrangement at all. This one is better and safer. 
I did a test lighting of the burner, but not for long. Time to make the drive belt, an elastic band is no good at all. It runs and turns the dynamo until you put it under load, then it flies off. A leather belt is industry standard and much better. First of all, I take a strip of leather and chamfer the ends. I chamfer one end on the underside and the other end on the top. And then I just need to apply some super glue. Normally I use medium viscosity super glue, but this is the runny stuff because I need it to soak into the leather. Once I apply the super glue, I use the soft hammer to tap the belt in the area of the joint. I left it to cure for about half an hour and then fitted the belt, and here it is. It's a bit too wide, and there are different methods of making drive belts. I think I'll make a video about one or two alternatives. The main thing is, this belt stays in place. I ran it for a while to verify that it was okay. But what I really needed to do was test it under load. Driving a dynamo is one thing, driving a dynamo under a load is entirely different. The good news is, when I short circuit the terminals, the engine stops, which is much better than the engine continuing to run and dragging the belt over the dynamo pulley. That's about it for this video, the plant is rapidly nearing completion now. In the next episode, after painting the condenser, I'll give the plant a full steam test. That's it for this one, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.